Hello everybody, this is Crispy Cody with my featured guest, Stephanie, my wife, and this is the Crispy Reviews Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about the Kilby Block Party Music Festival in Salt Lake City, Utah. We recently experienced it and enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun, and we're going to kind of go through the entire festival uh, day by day. Awesome. So... First up, we have the map pulled up. How we get to the festival? Well, Kilby gave us two options for free to be able to get to the festival, right? Yeah, I mean, there was multiple options. Obviously, like every fest, you can Uber, you can Lyft. I of mean, course, yeah. If you, if you are close enough and fortunate enough, you could even walk if you were staying somewhere close by. But mm -hmm. um, we were about two miles away, which wasn't terribly far um yeah it was in the downtown area but no it wasn't too terribly far yeah. um but we decided to utilize the utah bikes that they had offered so it's like these city bikes they have an app you sign up for it and once you're registered and everything you just kind of unlock it with your phone and you're on your way and it's free for three days so that was really nice um at least the thought was nice <laughs> right yeah i mean overall like it was good um i think like we had some unfortunate luck picking bikes so certain bikes um we had like the chain they need some maintenance <laughs> the chain didn't work on one of them um we had a flat tire on another one and we yep. switched it out immediately um <laughs> We had a couple where like the gears weren't working. So I think we just had some unfortunate luck, but like overall, like getting there most of the time, biking was good. Yeah. Leaving the fest, it was a little harder because of course you're in the dark. Everybody gets out like at the same time. Whereas getting there, we were like the first ones there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So since we got there early, it was easy breezy. But then when we were leaving, oh my goodness, there was so many people there was ubers there was cars there was uh hot dog vendors <laughs> that had random stands just there yeah. and they're like hot dog hot dog mm -hmm. get your hot dog i yeah. thought that was interesting it's kind of like whenever you leave a concert uh, yeah or like something. a concert yeah. or or like a sports event yeah even a sports event yeah, yeah. that's kind of what it felt like mm -hmm. but uh yeah it was nice that they offered those amenities though for free so you could use the bike uh, for free and then of course they had like the little train system too that you could like hop on and it takes you to and from on the green line so that was nice that you could utilize that too but we opted out of that we didn't do that we like the freedom of being able to bike <laughs> uh, so it was nice yeah so we made it to the festival mm -hmm. you check in your bicycle and everything with the awesome people at the bike valet valet yeah, yeah that's what was valet mm -hmm. And uh, you get a little wristband and you get to go inside the festival. So it's day one. It's Friday. We get in. It's the festival and we're all excited. Uh, so it's at the Utah State Fairgrounds. And uh, it's definitely the State Fairgrounds. Yeah. So as you can see on this map here, you enter at the very top of the map. You walk past the stadium. And you get to see the first stage, which is on your right, called the lake stage. And butted right next to it is the mountain stage. And then across from it, st uh, straight ahead, is the desert stage. And then, of course, the main stage on the left-hand side, the, the Kilby Court stage. Mm -hmm. So that's your layout of the festival. Yeah. Um, a lot smaller than I anticipated it to be. I mean, when they call it Kilby Block Party, it it fits in a block <laughs> so you're not really walking further than a block i would say you know yeah every, i mean everything is right there um basically you have your food vendors kind of um along the sides basically on the um left and right side where all the food vendors um and then 
you had random bathrooms just because it was at the state fairgrounds. State fairgrounds. Yeah. So and they had then... stationary bathrooms that are there year round. And then they had, you know, your porta potty. traditional porta yeah. potty in the corner. They were like in the far back, which yep. was um, next to like the merch. They did have a giant um, merch merch room. building yeah. yeah they really prioritized that i felt like <laughs> they did have a they did have a giant merch room which i mean it did have everything for kilby but also had everything for every artist yeah and it changed so, out every day yeah yeah so if, if there was like an artist a smaller band that you love on that friday that was the only day you could get that merch really because once the band left they took the merch with them so they didn't leave it behind for it to be sold later so that was interesting yeah and then i mean right next to the merch then you had the the water station the refillable yep. water stations yeah and they did have basically three giant jugs the first day we were there it definitely um had some issues had some issues they still had to work things out they were running out of water and yep. then people were having to tip the jugs to even get it to kind of dribble out any um, water yeah they didn't have hoses hooked up to them yet. Yeah. That was the issue. By day two, they had that fixed, or maybe even later that same day. Did they have it fixed yeah, later that same it, day? Yeah, it was quite a bit later. But yeah. um, they did have, like, you know, water and slushy drinks kind of where you could buy. Um, but a lot of people did bring their own reusable cups to fill up, of course, with water. Which we absolutely love. We, we love reusing any type of anything, so... <laughs> Yeah. Reusables are always welcomed um, yeah. to help lessen the environmental blow of water bottles. So, yeah, I would say that's the only complaint I had about the festival grounds was one, it was small, and two, they needed more water stations. So, if they could expand on the water stations and have them in more areas around the festival than just that one spot, that would be nice. Yeah. I mean, I think the big thing with they try to use the space the best they could and they did have, you know, with it being a fairgrounds, like they have just a random bathroom in a certain area. So like they have to work around like the bathrooms and the um, fairground foods. Yep. Yeah. They um, had permanent buildings for, for fairground, fairground foods, foods and then there was and vendors they with have trucks. To put the vendors all around that um, and then keep kind of like the main stage open um for the field so they have a lot they have to work around and then you also have the two stages that are right next to each other but then you also have to put in vip which is the other thing like you have to work around vip um yeah and uh this this festival definitely kind of had that set up unfortunately where at the lake stage and the main stage where they took about half of the stage basically so if you're if you're you know a festival attendee and you're in the ga section you're stuck on like the left side of the stage at the like the lake stage that's it that's the only area you really get vip gets all of the right side at the main stage uh it was reciprocal so you had all the vip people on the left side of the main stage and the ga stuck with only the right side which there was enough space, thankfully, mm -hmm. at the main stage. At the main stage, there was. Because yeah. there was the trees and everything, too. That was nice. Mm -hmm. the, you know, So we were able to get the shade and everything like that during the heat of the day. Um, so, yeah, you know, there was pluses and minuses. But, yeah. you know, obviously. I'm, I'm just glad they didn't have the VIP, like, in front of the GA. Like, they just picked a yeah, side. Yeah, completely in front. That yeah. would suck. I know that that's how they had it set up at uh, certain festivals. They'll do that. Love and Life, I think it's a newer festival that just happened. I think it was like the same weekend, mm -hmm. and we were looking at photos of it online, it going on, and we're like, "Holy crap! Like that sucks!" You know, just having all of VIP take up in front of the stage, and then GA is just like a whole all section back, back, like yeah. past the sound booth and stuff. Like yeah. that sucks. That's that's really crappy. Because then the thing is like even if the vip don't go to one of the sets like you're still all the way in the back 
like no matter even if exactly. you don't fill in the space yeah so like there were certain sets where the vip didn't fill in it was empty the side in the morning yeah. but like we were all squished in the ga filled up the vip wasn't so if they were in front of us then you would just be like there's way way in the there. back yeah and there's the artists nobody. would be like why are you guys all the way back there yeah <laughs> like that doesn't make any sense so thankfully kilby uh you know did it right at least gave us 50 50 you know quite literally 50 yeah. 50 so that was nice and then at the two smaller stages they didn't have that so it was like fair it was free for all fair game mm -hmm. so it was a mix of you know everybody so your single day people your ga people your vip people all of them at the mountain stage and the desert stage so you know that was kind of nice I, I i appreciate that they had that so it worked out mm -hmm. um but yeah other than that uh the only other thing that is on there that i wanted to point out is next to the desert stage they had silent disco which i will get into that a lot more later <laughs> so yeah, that's basically Kilby Block Party in a nutshell. We're going to go ahead and switch over to the lineup. And I'm going to pull that up one second. There we go. All right. So we got the schedule up. We went Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But we're going to start with Friday, of course. So we got to see Gustav, Yacht Club, Unknown Mortal Orchestra, Peach Pit, Always, Into Silent Disco, Courtney Barnett, Ty Seagull, Into Jai Paul, and then we finish out the night with Vampire Weekend. So, with that all said, that was a lot of names. Who was one of your favorite sets that happened on Friday? Um, on Friday, I would have to say... Vampire Weekend was still my favorite set of the day. Very stellar. I mean, they are the main, but just being able to finally see them, they're That overall, was your first time. Yeah. yeah. So I it's mean, it's, super it's, special. It's been a band that I've wanted to see for a very long time, and I mean, we kind of grew up listening to Vampire yeah. Weekend like as kids. Yeah, they're so, so much fun. I love their albums. Just, um their overall energy and their visuals on the screen i would say work <laughs> so it was engaging and then captivating so very fun memorable set vampire weekend was yes however it was all the way at the end of the day my feet gave out on me so that was fun <laughs> yeah well i mean we were we were right up there we were right up there, and then we had to wait like an hour and a half standing, just straight up waiting. Yep. And we were squished to the max. After standing all day. Yeah. We were squished to the max because people kept trying to sit behind us, and then people kept coming in because they thought there was holes, but there really wasn't any holes. It was just people were sitting. Yep. So then they would get there and it would be even more squished. Um so that was, yeah, that was definitely a, a long wait. But, I mean, we did get half the set, and then we ended up dipping towards the end because your feet. Because my ankles gave out on me because of my crappy yeah. shoes that I brought. So shame okay. on me. <laughs> we, we still saw them, and then yeah. we got to see them from the back for yeah. the, the very few songs at the end. But it was okay. special, yeah. They, they played a lot of the new album, which was really cool. They played, like, Capricorn uh they play capricorn <laughs> I, I i can't remember all the songs off the new record that they played i i, I remember, oh classical they played classical too that one was really good as well from the new record uh, but they also played father of the bride they played the one song new dorp to new york that song that song was really fun live i really enjoyed the extra long jam session so i can agree like they were definitely one of my favorite sets of the day, but who would you say is the artist that stood out to you the most on that day? Was it Vampire Weekend or was there somebody else who kind of? I mean, as took far as like surprise? undercard band, um, 
Gustav was actually my favorite. Gustav, which yeah. Which started off our day. Um, and they were a New York band. We really liked our um, New, New York, York bands. bands. Yeah. Yeah. But um, they were definitely one of the undercard that surprised me. Um, just their overall energy and um, how much they really got into like emotion and the lyrics and just everything. Um, she was scary. The lead singer. She was making some faces that were like... She was just very um, visual. Visual, yeah. yeah. Visual is a good way to describe it. She was expressive. Expressive, yeah. And um, visual with, I mean, everything. Because she was, like, it wasn't even her face. Like, she was, she was like her hands. She was hitting her head at times. She was using times. her hands. She was just very expressive. Like, yeah. you know, you're like an artist. So, like. Yeah. And it, it, so, Gustav is kind of like a post-punk kind of band so i would say it's a good mix of like talking heads and uh viagra boys that kind of vibe but make it female version and it was just electric and for that to be the first set of the day it really did it it caught me up by surprise too honestly um and it was so much fun because it was intimate like there was not that many people there and like everybody was really into it having a great time so it made it very memorable, I feel. So yeah, um, for me, my favorite set of the day. Oh boy, honestly, I want to say my favorite set was Gustav. Yeah. Yeah. They like they definitely was, or were, my favorite set of the day, by far. Like it was, it was just super. Honestly, I wish that they didn't start at that time like they should have been like a later kind of show um but i'm happy that we even got to see them they were great yeah um what band stood out to me the most um honestly i didn't think i was gonna like jai paul at all but when i saw him he did kind of stand out to me i like how he was dressed (laughs) i thought it was very interesting he was wearing like this green puffy jacket yeah it was I don't know if it was green or yellow. It was very bright. It was like a neon neon. green. Yeah, Yeah. like a lemon lime. Yeah, (laughs) it was just very bright. Yeah, so he was wearing that. He had this interesting haircut, and he was wearing these like Y2K sunglasses, like from the Matrix or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's just up there singing and dancing to his music. And uh, the band was tight. They all sounded well. Like it was, it was really, really good. no sound issues or anything like that so it was just good i'm glad that we caught their set Mm -hmm. like if you do plan on catching him at pitchfork music festival in chicago i definitely recommend catching his set like they're they're definitely an act to see yeah all right so that was friday we're gonna move on to saturday we bike home we but you know back bike not home but you know to the hotel (laughs) dodging traffic like Mm -hmm. frogger and uh get some shut eye (laughs) on to the next one on to the next one so saturday is a big day we come in with guns blazing so the whole rapture here for saturday of who we saw was uh late night drive home rc drive malcolm todd now is it crooked kings or crooked kings i'm gonna go with crooked Crooked know. Kings. Yeah. They were a Utah band, right? They were like from Utah. I mean, there was a lot of Utah bands. There was, yeah. So. Any, Anyways, Beach Fossils. Uh, we saw some of Slow Pulp and then went to the garden, obviously. <laughs> uh, Yellow Days. Bombay Bicycle Club. Death Cab for Cutie. And the Postal Service. So, that is our busiest day Mm -hmm. of the whole festival for us. Um, The most bands that we saw in a day. So the big question here, again, is who was your favorite set of that day? So that day, I would have to say I had several. Um, But if I had to give it to one, I would say Bombay Bicycle Club. Bombay Bicycle Club. My favorite. And I mean, for everything because like which is crazy because they were on the desert stage 
which they is were, the smallest stage. They were stage. on the smallest stage. The crowd was amazing. We got stuck waiting because there was the like The weather delay. Yep. There was and a random freak storm that was uh, in the area. It was in the area. Then we got delayed 30 minutes? 30 minutes, yep. Yeah, it was Dreaded 30, 30 minutes. minutes. I mean, luckily they gave them like 10 minutes over, so we still got... A 40 like, minutes. Yeah, set. it was still like a 40 minutes. It was around 40 set, minutes. They, I think they cut, I saw somebody post the set list on Reddit, and uh, I think they cut like three or four songs. Yeah. So. But overall, like, they were just amazing, and the crowd was so. With it. With it. Yeah. And um, it was so much fun. Yeah. It was they, electric. They were definitely like energy everything i mean i know they didn't like get to like talk too much but they just kept trying yeah. to go and get the most out of the set that they could with the time that they had left i think i think yeah. it's funny that you say that because you know they wanted to talk but yeah they were i think they were just stunned at like how much love the festival crowd was like giving them mm -hmm. and they were just like screw it we're gonna go with it like we we just gotta we just gotta bust out these songs and uh mm -hmm. just bring out that vibe and everybody was just vibing with it and it, yeah. it just kept going and it felt like we were ascending to another dimension yeah. <laughs> with them i mean they were like one of the bands that i was the most excited to see me too so like getting to see them and on that small stage and being so like up close too was just like couldn't have been any better. I don't think it could have been any better. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would still love to see them again. And Same. I, I hope that great. they, I, I know that they don't tour much anymore. They are from the UK. Um, they were a lot bigger in the early 2010s and I regret missing them. And I know you do too. <laughs> so getting to see them, you know, quite literally almost like a decade later, <laughs> uh, and see that they are just as in tune with each other as they were maybe 10 years ago is just magical. Like it's, it just shows that they can stand the test of time as a band. Mm. So I really do. They hope, you know, Bombay bicycle club, if you're listening, like please consider a USA tour and maybe come to Florida. <laughs> so they, I would agree with you. They were definitely one of my favorite sets. If the favorite set of the whole day, um, but yeah, uh, moving on from that, what what band do you believe stood out to you the most on that day? Like, was there anybody special or anything that just kind of caught you by surprise? I could think of one. Hmm. Not sure one. <laughs> well, I, I think one of my... I, I know we've seen them already, but Beach Fossils. I, I love Beach Fossils. They're they a great do. band, but them. they brought out a little special guest and uh, it was Dusty's daughter. Mm -hmm. and uh it was just so adorable i thought that was a really special moment and uh how she was like waving to the crowd and then she got up to the mic and, and dusty was like you know say hi to the crowd and she's like hi <laughs> and everybody just was like mm -hmm. ah! <laughs> yeah well because she had her little shades on yeah her she... shades on her ear protection mm -hmm. and all that stuff dancing and waving yeah, she... and she didn't care. She was like the coolest kid in the world. Coolest little kid. Mm. But yeah, D Dusty, the dad, like, you know, he's the lead singer. He was super proud of that moment. And he he was boasting about it on social media for days on days after the festival. So I thought that was a really special moment, personally. Yeah, I mean, I guess, like, surprise act, I would probably say um, ARCY Drive. RC Drive, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think they were um, energetic, right? I I loved their set too, and I would say that was probably another one that um, stood out to me. Yeah. And they were also on the small stage. Yep. That so I think the, the desert small stage, yeah. The, just... the desert stage was magical that day. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of highlights. Uh, the only one that kind of was a dud was Slowpole. Well, it wasn't even slow. Pope was a dud. It was just the crowd. We couldn't. We had a bunch of people talking around us. That's right. And then we like kept trying to move, kept trying to move, and it didn't matter where we went. So that wasn't slow. Pope. That was just the crowd yeah. vibe. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so. then you have me itching to go over to the garden, so... Yeah, we just left. <laughs> we eventually went over to the garden and I went a little crazy. Yeah. So, that's fun. Um, I would say for me, who is my favorite set? Um, oh man, there's so many good bands on this day, like... Um, it, I, I have to give it a dead tie to Bombay Bicycle Club and uh, the Postal Service. Being able to finally see the Postal Service live was a big expectation, honestly. And being able to like see it through and live it, it really like lived up to the hype. And yeah. they sounded so good. They did. Jenny Lewis and Ben Gibbards, they, they were just great. They yeah. were so great. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Like, I think that I, I think I have to give the time, the final tick to Postal Service just because like I, I you know, for me personally, yeah, that was just like the band I really wanted to see live. And since they were headlining, it was just amazing. It was yeah. really cool. But Bombay Bicycle Club did take me by surprise. So I would say that they were probably like my surprise act of the day by far. Even though I knew that they were going to be good, I didn't realize they were going to be that good. Yeah, it was just the overall energy, the vibe, everything that came together. Yeah, it excelled mm. to infinity and beyond, just like, psh, yeah, to another plane. So, any anything else that we want to talk about on Saturday? No? No. No. I think that wraps it up. Dang. Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Last day of the festival. Sunday fun day is the best way to put it i would say so on sunday we saw 26 fix little moon model act trees royal otis panchico day glow i can't read your handwriting it's 100 gex oh 100 gex <laughs> ginger root and that's it so sunday was a little bit lighter but still just as strong very fun day honestly mm. it was very fun so for you do you know who your favorite set was for that day um, absolute favorite my favorite set was definitely ginger root ginger root really? yeah ginger root was my favorite what set. yeah wow yeah, what wow so why why were they your favorite that's insane um Ginger Root, it was just like, I mean, obviously, like, the music was amazing, like, everything was perfect, but, like, you also had, like, a story with it. Yeah. And, like, his energy, everything was just very well. Calculated. Yeah. It and, felt calculated. And then, once again, it was at the small stage, so, like... The desert stage, yeah. Yeah, so, like, we were up close, right there, the whole crowd, the energy. Yeah. Like... The desert stage had probably the most magic out of all the stages. Just because of where it was placed, honestly. I felt like it was in a good spot. Yeah, and, but uh, if you didn't get there early and like get a good spot, then, then it you're was kind of screwed. Hard. Yeah, it was, yeah, you it definitely had to like plan to get there. Yeah. I'm really surprised that Ginger Root was your favorite yeah. act of that entire day. That's amazing. I mean it was a great band that we ended with you know yeah so it, it went out on a high note for sure yeah, it's a good end and i agreed like you know he had a story with it and uh he had like these fun music videos that he played the anime the anime it's movie the anime. that he's doing which is exciting i i'm not 100 percent sure if that's real or not but i think it is real and you know i'm looking forward to seeing it because i think this band is gonna go pretty far you know they they got a lot of talent so sweet so overall uh what band stood out to you the most for the entire day or who took you by surprise you know um for me the one that took me by surprise was actually royal otis royal otis really yeah i was not expecting that um it was definitely very um like how the crowd reacted or just the band no, just the bands. Like, I yeah. loved the hardcore, like, metal. Wait, are you talking about Model Act Trees? Sorry, I'm talking about Model Act Trees. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say. I was like, wait, I was like, no. 
Okay. Model, Model actress. Yeah, they That's were on the main true. stage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the band was just very um, hardcore metal. Yeah. And then like super shark tones, mm-hmm. noisy. Yeah. Which reminded me of like things I used to listen to when I was in like my punk. Metal like, punk phase. Yeah. 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 Growing up. Um, and then, like, I mean, the main singer, he was just very, um... Interactive. He was interactive, he went in the crowd, he was all over, um... He had some sass. Yeah. <laughs> very, um... Commanding. Yeah, commanding, and, um, just, uh, overall presence, I guess you can say. Yeah. yeah. So that one definitely... Because I didn't really listen to model actresses before no. we went. Because every time I would play them, it would be in the car, and you'd be like, "I can't listen to this." I right couldn't now. listen to it while I was like <laughs> driving. It was yeah. Like you put it on in like hardcore traffic, and I couldn't focus or something. Yeah, you'd be like, "This is this is too this is adding or it's stress like, to me." <laughs> yeah, too early in the morning. Yeah. But um. Yeah, maybe like. So going in blind to model actresses really caught you by surprise. Yeah, it was very yeah. surprising that yeah. um, I actually would rate them high up. Yeah, on my list, and I would actually want to see them again. Yeah. I would love to see them again. Yeah, I would love to see them, but like not at like a amphitheater or something. Like I would definitely want to like see them. Like a club them, show. Like a, like a smaller setting. Yeah. yeah. If they came to Orlando, like, maybe the social, that would be really exciting. Okay, but well that's maybe a little too... Even, like, the House of Blues. Like, okay, House of Blues. It. Like, a, um, like a medium size. Maybe the Plaza. Yeah. Plaza Live. Anything medium size. But just not amphitheater. Like, yeah. Like, a medium to small club, yeah. Yeah. That would be cool. I think that... I think that's very attainable. Yeah. yeah. But I know your surprise act was definitely Little Moon. All right. I feel like that was your... Uh, so... Yes, my surprise surprise act of the day was Little Moon. I don't know what it was, (laughs) but they are like this folk band. They have little to no traction, I guess you could say, on like streaming services. They only have like 12,000 monthly listeners. And, uh, you know, I listened to a couple of their songs before the festival. I just thought they were good compared to the other band that was playing at the, you know, the same time. And, man, I just wasn't expecting the whirlwind of emotion to hit me. Like and hear, it hit me. Heart. Yeah, like, her yeah. voice and how she sings and she falsettos and all these it's different, like, like... I mean, her voice is so, like, angelic. Angelic, it's yeah. very pretty. Um, but then with the rest of the band, I mean... With the have... harp? Yeah, the harp. The piano. The piano. The guy on the bass that was, like... Mm-hmm. It was like the, the perfect. It was the yeah. perfect bass. Like I, I don't know how you could play bass any perfect than that guy did, but it just like complemented everything. Everything tied together, and yeah. they all had their parts. I would definitely say they're like ones to watch. Like put them on your radar. Go add them on your playlist. Check them out. Support them, because they are special. <laughs> yeah, and it's definitely um, like it's not like your typical band because they do have all these different you know you have the harp it's just like certain bands that like they have more to them than just your drums guitar bass yeah they have intricate levels nice layered levels of their of their sound and it's so like precise and dynamic at the same time you're not gonna listen to it if you're like I'm a hardcore metal pop punk kind of style. Like, yeah. you know, like they are very It's like a it, it reminds me of like uh, you know, when you're watching like a summer movie or something and you know, the cars like driving and they're kind of like on this road trip together, like mm-hmm. a group of friends or something, and then that's just on on the radio or something and it's kind of like adding to that layer of summer s kind of scene mm-hmm. you know just it, it's 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 like a pleasant summer or spring breeze you know pure happy bliss yep just pure bliss mm-hmm. yeah but whatever it was it took me by surprise brought tears to my eyes i never really cl- cry during band sets but when i do the fountain works turned on and uh 
I was just overly joyed with this band and I'm super excited. I know they made an announcement during their set. They're releasing a new album in July, Mm -hmm. heavily anticipating it. I can't wait. And they gave us one song from that album and I loved it. I thought it was, it was so good. Mm -hmm. Like they're great. It was good. Pure bliss. Um, but who was my favorite set of the day? Um, Again, I'm still so surprised that Ginger Root was your favorite set. Like, that took me by surprise. I thought you were going to say Dayglow because that one was, like, one of your most anticipated sets, you know, from the entire fest. And it just happened to be Ginger Root. That's so interesting. Um, man, it's definitely a coin toss between... Um, See, it's it's like picking between your 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 favorite shirt or something, you know. Like, oh man, do I wear, do I want to wear this shirt today or do I want to wear this shirt today? I don't know. Like, this one's my favorite, but this one's really cool. Um, honestly, Ginger Root, Ginger Root was just so much fun. Like, it was a three-piece band. They had so much energy. the The lead dude, he he was singing playing two different pianos he had two different synths and he had an op1 which was cool i i you know if you know insider music kind of stuff op1 is like peak nerd technology (laughs) so seeing him use that was really fun um but yeah just like the whole choreography i guess you could say of the set like it was just you know, they had the cameraman guy running around and like, yeah. it was like with a camcorder was and he was live. getting up in his face and yeah. he would like, you'd look at him like this, you'd go like, Kind of reminds you of like the, the old days. Like, like the 80s or like something? The, yeah, the yeah. camcorder Nostalgia. stuff. Yeah. yeah, he had like a nostalgia factor in yeah. his set, which was just so much fun. But you, like if you were far away, being able to see that on the screen, like you felt like you were really in it too. Yeah, yeah, so. exactly. And I think that's exactly why they did it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it was just that extra layer that they needed to, I don't know, really, entertain. Really feel the energy, because you could feel the energy from them yeah. by just even seeing them and also watching it live from the cameraman going around and... And dance and like, yeah, dancing yeah. and viewing. And he was just like zooming in on the drummer and like the bassist. And then he like jumped down in the crowd at one point. And he was like yeah. pointing out on the crowd. And then mm-hmm. he was like filming, uh, like the band manager in the back. And he like flipped off the camera and stuff. <laughs> like I have a video of that, and I thought that was hilarious, honestly. <laughs> so I don't know. It, like I said, um, favorite set of the day. And it was the last set of the day for us because yeah. we had to we had to get going to see uh, our late night set because yeah. we had one late night show that we did of the entire weekend, so we had to miss LCD sound system. Yeah. So we can get some food and recoup. Yeah, we went. <laughs> yeah. That. So Ginger Root is what we ended with, and it was just it was amazing. Yeah. Best note to end the festival with. Yeah. Yeah, and we've seen LCD before yeah we got to so see lcd it wasn't like we haven't seen them as a main act yeah we thankfully we've seen lcd it was back in uh 2017 so yeah seven years ago <laughs> mm-hmm. which is crazy to say um at shaky knees and they were great there so i know that everybody online was saying that this performance was like the best performance from lcd to like end the festival with and everything and it really went out on a high note i'm so glad that everybody got to witness it and enjoy what lcd is i mean james murphy is quite literally a a genius when it comes to music um his genre bending styles between dance music and punk music is just cunning you know it's it's you know it's lcd there's only one band that's like that (laughs) so it's super cool but uh yeah that's our kill me block party yeah that's what we got to see and exactly. what we chose, basically. Yeah. But um, so ending ha- it with experience. Exactly. So uh, what, what would you rate your experience on this festival? Because we have been to a few festivals. We've been to a few Shaky Knees. We've been to Firefly Fest. Uh, we've been to some local festivals here in Florida, such as Three Points Fest. And, you know. We've been to a good 
Yeah, we've been we've been to a good amount <laughs> yeah. of festivals. So what what would you say was your experience in total for this festival? Like how did it compare? I mean, personally, like I enjoyed how you didn't have to run miles and miles and miles to get states to stage because yeah. it was easier to hop. Um, especially with you because you um like to plan our day one act to the next act to the next act and if you have to hop really far from stage to stage there's no way that you can see every act um so at least I, in full yeah i didn't mind the square footage i think they used it to the best of their abilities um, there was definitely a lot of people as far as Kilby. It was definitely packed it was sold during out. those afternoon hours, like as far as evening like, hours, yeah, yeah, yeah. Evening hours, more like four to, you know, closing, like that was definitely like the stages were full. Um, and you definitely had to plan accordingly if you wanted to be up close, but I would say, I mean, the only downside that I had was um, the small stage was definitely like there was a lot of people that wanted to see the acts at the small stage and it definitely got packed quick. Um, I didn't feel like there was a ton of area in the small stage. It wasn't a lot of wiggle room. Yeah. No. Um, which one you mean the desert stage or do you mean the mountain stage or do you mean both? Mm, uh, I feel like both were really small. Both were small, but the wasn't a lot the, of standing. The area. desert was, I felt like even smaller. Um, yeah. Cause the, cause from yeah. the bathroom, like there is a bathroom yeah. not that far from the stage and it's a permanent. Well, and then you had the disco on the other, the silent disco building right yeah. adjacent to it. Yeah. Yep. So I just felt like that was a little squishy um, because I felt like every act when we were going there, it was just like packed. Yeah. But we later learned that if you just walk up on the side of the stage, like you could kind of yeah. nosy in right there. Yeah. So and that's kind of what we did on the last two days on Saturday and Sunday. Sunday yeah, for sure. I mean, we still got there early for every act. Yeah. Like if you would have gotten there like, on time or like you wanted to see a band like before back to back like you would have been way out there like towards the bathrooms um but i think th like the only other thing we talked about was just basically friday as far as like friday how a lot of the crowd was talking yeah um, it kind of ruined acts like uh yacht club and peach pit um mm -hmm. at the lake stage there's so many people talking it, it just kind of it killed the vibe a bit and yeah. uh we were we were even talking amongst ourselves saying like what what's up with this is this like a west coast thing is this uh yeah there's definitely like certain um acts friday was definitely like the worst between friday saturday sunday as far as like the amount of people talking during sets mm -hmm. um even slow pulp though that was another one where it was like no matter where we moved we just there was just people talking yeah so, and they're a softer kind of band, too. Yeah, and if it's, like, a softer band, then it's, like, even harder to hear. And then you're, like, trying to listen over people chattering. Um, but for me, like, overall experience, like, I mean, the sets, the bands, everything was great. The food was great. I loved all the food options. Um, didn't have any bad food. Um, transportation was great. Like I loved being the in the free city, transportation. Yeah. Getting to the, the, um, the actual grounds. I mean, there was nothing that I would say was really bad. No. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say, you know, my positive experience was like, uh, <laughs> definitely, the silent disco. <laughs> I love the silent yeah, disco so. because, you know, one on the first day it was cold. So getting to go in there and like warm up mm. was nice. And then on the last day we went in there and it was hot. 
Or was it Saturday? I think it was Saturday it was, that we went in Yeah, there. it was Saturday we went in because it was going to rain. Yeah. And then we went in there to escape it. Exactly. Yeah, so we went in there, we escaped the rain. Um, even though we didn't really know it was going to rain, we just kind of went in there to go in there. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so <laughs> it was really nice. I loved the setup in there. You know, you got the headphones with the three channels you have three different djs playing friday definitely had the best djs uh the red stage had uh, a hype kind of sound um that was like a, like deep house i would say and then the blue um dj they had like vaporwave music kind of going and then the green one was more kind of like acid house or jungle-esque dnb kind of music which is more you know, EDM for us. It's a it's an indie festival, so why are, why are we playing this kind of music at an EDM festival? But whatever. <laughs> so it was it was fun all around. It was nice to get in there and just dance and uh, dance under the unicorn disco ball, <laughs> which was cool. Um, other experiences around the fest. Uh, we didn't really go and do any of the vendor experiences. Uh, we stayed pretty much clear from those we didn't go to celsius we didn't do tito's um we didn't even check out threads their bags and stuff like that like eh. we we're we we're there for one thing and one thing only and it was the bands and uh shout out to uh on a side note the ice cream <laughs> the car the uh you know because they were at a uh what's it called the fair the fair, fair yeah so since it's a fairgrounds, they had permanent fixture buildings and one of the buildings served ice cream and shout out to them because they had some really good ice cream. Yeah. It was really tasty and they gave really big portions for the price that they were asking. And I, mean, uh, yeah. I was happy. Like they didn't have like the most options, the bougiest ice cream you could think of, but like it was your basic flavors and like the scoops were huge they're humongous yeah like so they, you got, like, they were a like waffle cone this big and it was like literally falling off the <laughs> waffle cone and i mean you're thankfully like it was only like eight nine dollars yeah but like and that was it totally splittable and like i mean with the heat and everything it was the heat perfect. on the second and third day yeah. saturday and sunday yeah like it was a lot hotter on those days and the ice cream just came in clutch. Like it was so yeah, nice. Was yeah. And they had a little shade area there too. So you could like sit in the shade and mm -hmm. it was nice. It was very, very nice. Um, the food variety was, was really nice too. They had, you know, barbecue, pad thai. Um, they had pizza. They had chicken fingers, fried foods, corn dogs, all that kind of stuff. They had, you know, Pretty much everything you could think of. Yeah, every option. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they even had, like, vegan options. They had everything. Yeah, they had vegan options, yeah. too. Dietary options, of course. Yeah. Um, my favorite was the chicken Philly. <laughs> that was, yeah. you know, they had no line for that thing. And I walked right up, got my chicken Philly, and I was happy. It was just a good portion and everything. So, yeah, we were, were we were more about, like, good quality, but good portions yeah we were looking for the good portions and we noticed that basically the fairgrounds offered the best portions over the vendors so maybe vendors need to step up their game just a little bit you know on portions at least for the price that they're asking for <laughs> yeah so yeah overall uh the vibe i would say you know Thankfully, it was like a, a good mix of ages and everything. So it wasn't just like a bunch of fratty college kids running around like going crazy. No, I mean, you, or high you, school kids. You had high school kids, you had college kids, you had adults, you had families. Like, yeah, you there was kids, little kids. You had literally everyone. Yeah. So it was a good mix. Um, yeah. yeah. So I thought the vibe was pretty stellar. Uh, would I would I attend Kilby Block Party again? Yeah, I would. I think it's great. Um, I I'm very appreciative that they're keeping the indie music community alive and well in the West Coast. I wish that there was one closer on the East Coast. <laughs> uh, but you know, 
shout out to Kilby. Kilby's definitely crushing it in the game. I know this is, I think, their fifth lineup ever. That was their fifth year doing this. So. Well, before is Kilby Court. Well, yeah, that's a venue. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's not even a festival. Mm. It's just a venue called Kilby Court, and it's been kicking it for 25 years. Gotcha. But the festival, Kilby Block Party, has only been going on for the past five years. This was the fifth year of it. Mm. And uh, I think they're doing great. They're definitely, you know, they got some growing pains to do and, and fix with some certain things, you know. I, I mean... The merch area, I think they need to like have more than just one area for merch. Water, I think they need to have more areas that are accessible for free water so you can refill your reusable. Um, other than that, like like I think you you know put the cherry on top by saying that like they did the best that they could with that space, mm -hmm. and they really did. Mm -hmm. Like they made the most of it with the space, and uh, I couldn't have been happier. It, it was a really fun festival and uh yeah hopefully all of y'all got to enjoy our experiences from this festival and if you experienced this festival too comment below or you know tag us let us know what you did and whose sets that you saw or yeah all that and more thanks for tuning in on the crispy reviews podcast remember to like follow and share keep it crispy thank you